Welcome to the Raise Up Podcast with Athena and Charlie. We are here to share with you interesting stories about our entrepreneurial journey and um, the relationships that we maintain and uh, tips and tricks. And uh, this is for anybody that is looking to get on the entrepreneurial journey or is on the journey or is just interested in what's going on with the Grimms these days or is connected to one of our businesses somehow and is just checking in with us. So we're really glad that you're here. And uh, today is a special edition because Charlie and I are celebrating an anniversary this month. And so I I get quite a few questions about how do we navigate through marriage and working and family and all of that. And so we're just going to give you a little window into our lives and um, absolutely uh, just sharing, sharing whatever comes up. So um, thank you for joining us to our episode 15. So Charlie. Go ahead, Tina. Um, you know, one of the things that uh, really I would say is we've been working together really like the whole thing started when we got married in 2004. And then your partnership with Brent Sanders at BAC, you bought Brent out of the business that year. And we were kind of at a crossroads here. It made sense to me that if we were married and we were, um, we were joining forces that energies started to consolidate to some of our main businesses. And at the time I owned a business and we were starting the advertising business. And we also had the, the limo and bus business. And so it was like a decision that we made to kind of start to let go of some of these other pieces. And, um, and so what was that like for you? Like, I remember like the year we got married, which was 20 years ago this year. And what was going on with us? Just busy. We're pretty busy. It was busy. I mean, well, it was, it felt really busy because we had, like, I was still maintaining my clientele. We, I think we were even doing, were we doing car piloting on the side back then as well? No, I think we were done with that trying to remember what else we had our hands in and maybe were we done with the no we were doing rv rentals well, we still snow plowing yep we were still snow plowing lawn maintenance painting i think we're still doing painting too yep and maybe rv rentals i'm trying to remember well, i knew we were doing snow plowing because uh we lost those contracts with uh in 20 2010 no i think it was earlier than that but Anyways, it's been yeah, a long journey. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, that's how it got started is, uh, it just made sense to me that we started to consolidate some of our efforts because really be before that we were running in this parallel line where we had, like I was off doing my thing and you were off doing your thing and we just really didn't commingle in any, any of, of each other's stuff. We helped, but yeah. I didn't think we were fully vested mm -hmm. yeah and I remember having because of where I was personally in my own place in my own head I remember having some resistance to moving things into oneness really like merging things and we'd had at, up until that point we'd been together for seven years and we hadn't commingled anything like we had separate bank accounts we had just separate 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 before we got married i don't remember it being a tough deal with you i thought it was more tougher with myself because it seemed like i had we had a lot more than you did so in the beginning so i think it was more of a challenge for myself in the beginning because it was we were i was building and i was a much bigger entity than when you started off on your cleaning company, you know, you just had a couple of vehicles and some cleaning supplies. We had limos and cars and vans and plow trucks and sanders and dump trucks. A lot of assets. A lot of assets. So it was a lot of uh, me um, bringing you in 
than I think you bring yourself in. Well, so talk more about that. Like your app, was it like apprehension? Was it, or is it like, uh, what I were mean, you, what was going through your mind at that time when we're in this space where we're like coming together and we're trying to figure out how, how to move things together? Uh, I think there was a lot of uh, rocky waters there at the time. And there was a lot of up and down selfishness on both sides. Uh, you know, you were much younger and you were, uh, you know, kid too. And so there was just a lot of, there was just a lot of stuff going on there. It was just a lot of business, but your organization skills really helped bring the company up to where it is now. And, and uh, it was just a lot of, uh, a lot of moving parts up then and a lot of youngness on both of our sides. I mean, that was 20 years ago. So yeah, I was 35, you were 27. So, I mean, it was a lot of uh, maturity things coming up and a lot of our days back in the days of partying too, back in the day when we'd go out and take the limos out and things like that too. So it was just a different phase of our life. Yeah, I remember having to come to a place where I had to make a decision on, am I moving towards oneness in this situation or am I going to continue in this separate space? And I think that that's really, if you are looking to work with your spouse or you're coming together with a partner, it you have to make a decision on um, like where that's going to sit for you and both be in agreement about it. Us coming, for, or at least at that time in my life, I had um, had this like spiritual awakening around God and had these like ideas that had been given to me by um, just some studying that I had done in that faith. And I just, I thought that we needed to be moving towards oneness. And so what did that look like exactly? And coming from a place where I never really had a great example of what does oneness look like? Uh, it was, I felt like we struggled a lot those earlier, those earlier years because of the resistance that I added to the table with that. I really felt like there was a lot of extra that now that I understand how things work now, just didn't have to be. So still to this day, there's some of that, you know, I think not that as much. There is this like this, what, what makes especially our relationship, what it is, is that you and I have this like, we have this contrast. You see things in one direction and I see things in another direction. And so we get to have this opportunity to bring that together. And the willingness that we have to uh, really like see, see each other's perspective is like, like the story that is, has come along. I agree. Some days, some days it's that way. I mean, you know, it's, it's tough. It's working with your spouse is tough. I mean, um, what they feel is important sometimes is not what you feel is important and what I feel is important. She definitely doesn't think this is important sometimes. So it definitely um, comes to a, uh, uh, some battling grounds, but you try to just pick the neutral area and try to keep it calm and not be mean, not hang up on people, not be, you know, uh, try, to, try to be kind. You know, I think that there is definitely a level of emotional intelligence that when you can, when you can work on your self-awareness, that makes a big difference. Uh, and I'm sure everybody that is watching this podcast has met people who really don't understand the way that they behave, how it affects others. They have exactly. an idea, but it's not, it's not a, a a real idea in view of what others are seeing. And then there's some people that um, this is just, this is my perspective and you don't have to agree with it. However, this is my perspective and you just leave it at that. Sometimes there's nothing that you can do about that. I agree. It's a tough subject. I mean, it's, it's not an easy subject when you're talking about working with your spouse. I mean, uh, 
there, there's good days and bad days, and that's just what it is. I mean, and I don't want anybody to think it's hunky dory or or it's horrible either. It's 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 work. It's it's a work because you get to go home with it, and then you know, and then um, there's always uh, ups and downs on it. Uh, I do I think it's the best thing that happened for our company. A hundred percent. To some days it's uh, it's painful. A hundred percent. Some days it's great. A hundred percent. So I mean, it's just a uh, try to view it in the best way possible. But it is like it, it's hard to not think that somebody else can uh, control your emotions sometimes and how things are. But you know when they are uh, what you feel not being kind or you feel like you're being brushed off to the side or something else is more important. Um, that is tough for the other person because the other person feels that this is important too. So it, it's a it, it's a delicate balancing act. And then when you get the kids that work with you, it's even more. And then you have your your family that works for you, and it's even more. So it's it's all it's all it's all relative, I guess. It's all relative. So, anyways, I, I don't want to see I'm not enthusiastic about it, but it's it's there's a lot there and working with your spouse and it is not for a lot of people. I mean, I talked to other people and they said, you're crazy. I mean, yeah. you, there's no way that you could work with your spouse and knowing how he is or how she is. And it's, uh, it is some days it is crazy, but some days it's the best. It's, so it's, you, you got to look at both ways of it and you have to try to regroup yourself when you've been treated not kindly or nicely and you have to just say do they really mean it that way or is that the way that they just are and in some days it's a little tougher to choke down and today we have a little spat because I wanted her to give me a decision on something that was supposed to be done and she didn't feel it was important because she was on a different meeting so uh, she felt that was more important and so there it was a little bit of a tension this morning and, and it's uh, not because she wants to be rude or mean she just says what she's going to say and then I'm trying to take care of something but it's uh it's it's push it's push and shove some days so uh I I really have a uh um I've tried to not get upset and not get mad or get up uh, there because it doesn't really do any well but some days you just feel like you're not being heard yeah yeah so I know this is not one of the cheerful ones that are in error. Uh, it is going to be our anniversary, which I'm excited about that. But uh, it is a tough subject to talk about it. And it's a, uh, I w want you guys to know that if you guys are planning on getting business with your spouses, you know, to really have some clear outlines about who's going to do what and what's going to be there. Because sometimes those lines get very blurred and, um, and somebody tries to take the other person's job or do something on that. And the long run, we're trying to do the same thing. Um, we just have two different techniques of doing it and two different styles. And one's not better than the other. It's just uh, two different ways. And then when you get two ATA personality people that are inside there, it's even rougher sometimes because you're both trying to be the one that's trying to control everything. And sometimes you just got to sit back and just let it, let it run its course. Well, and you know, when you say trying to control everything, it's like we both want to make sure that this thing that's important gets done. But I really feel like early on, it was just, it was so hard because we couldn't, we couldn't get, like, like we couldn't cross over that bridge. Yeah, we were probably tripping over immaturity the whole way, but it was this idea that we just could not figure out how to like identify this is what you were going to do and this is what I was going to do. Because when something would come up and an employee would come and say, oh, this and this is going on, then it just got handled instead of going, hey, did you talk to Charlie about that? That's kind of his area right now. And um, or, hey, did you talk to Athena about that? And so that was something I think really valuable that we learned. Like even now there is this like, there's things that you handle that uh, I don't even, I don't even have to call the shop to find out what's going on. Like you're just on top of it, you're handling that. I don't need to figure out what next cars we're buying. You just handle that. You source the vehicles, you decide what's going to be the best fit for the fleet. You are, you are understanding what's going on with warranties. You have like these close connections with our clients. And, and before it was like the waters were kind of muddied and we just tripped over that. And I'll say one of the, the single greatest tools that, that helped us with our miscommunication 
was getting a shared calendar. We have a shared family calendar that the kids see, and we have a shared work calendar. And so it's not my calendar and Charlie's, it's Athena and Charlie's calendar that he can see what's going on and I add everything in for him or he adds in the stuff that he needs also. But that I feel like just was such a relief when we both got on board with the shared calendar. I think it was helpful. I, I don't know if that was the cure all by any means, but I think it was helpful. It definitely showed where things were at and what we were doing. Um, you know, what? it's, uh, I don't know what I could give you as advice for, for getting a business to your partner. Um, I, I, I don't know. Um, I don't know if I, we got it figured out 100% ourselves sometimes. I, it, so. I, I don't think that we have it figured out by any means. And part of the reason is, is because you and I change over time. Like our minds change about things, our perspectives change. And I think that that's one thing that we have done for each other is we've given each other room to grow into thinking about things differently. I agree with that 100%. And that's something that I think... Uh, I'm always learning something new or trying something out. And that is one area where Charlie has absolutely uh, just like, sometimes he turns and shakes his head, but he still, he's like, allows me that space to like move into that next phase and understand. And, and that is probably one of the key pieces of living out those raise up uh, values is there sometimes he doesn't understand but he still is kind and um and allows me to be who i am so yeah that's good i appreciate that thank you you're welcome you know um if i'm thinking of some other things that really we spent a lot of money working with people to show us how much we were on the same page. And in hindsight, uh, I think that getting in front of that for people that are looking to um, get into business together as like a, a, a pre-rec is to just like figure out what is it that you want this business to be? Or like look at it from, okay, if we're planning five or 10 years out and we're seeing it here, like how do we get there from here and like playing it backwards? I, I felt like that was a lot of what, when we were in these miscommunication conflicts and that I felt like that's what the counselors were doing or uh, was explaining how we were on the same page more than we weren't often. Yeah, a couple more. Yeah, they were definitely talking about we were running in the same circle, but just talking differently to each other. There's a lot of uh, misconceptions about working with your spouse. So I, I just, it's it's uh, it's great because you can trust that person, but the other part is it that you, uh, you definitely have to be mindful the way you treat them and how they treat it because it, it affects your whole day or affects your mood for that week or whatever else is and you try to change it around but sometimes it's a little difficult and hard and so you have to be sure that if you you're unkind or unnice that you should probably say you're sorry and and try to restart the day and do things and not just try to make excuses why you can't do things or why it was the, the way it is because no matter what that phone call probably wasn't that important as your spouse or that whole thing wasn't as important so you should probably just say hey you know well this is more important than a Zoom meeting, or it's more important than this employee that I have to talk to for 15 minutes because it's your spouse, it's your partner, it's your loved one. So when you're not feeling that need or you're feeling that love, then you kind of feel resentful sometimes on it. And I just, uh, I, it's, it's, it's sometimes it's a hard mindset to get out of. Um, and uh, it, it's a, uh, so clear boundaries sometimes are good. You know, like um, we have some other friends that uh, have some other businesses and their their wife runs one side of the business and the husband runs the other side of the business or two different businesses, but they're commingled, their money, they're everything else that is there. It's just, uh, it makes more sense for them to uh, have this part of the business in here and then the other person runs the other part of the business here, but they're both very lucrative, very good money businesses. They just, 
uh, there's not a hard lot for decision making. And I don't know how that would work for us uh, on there. I, I think that we do well together in a whole. I mean, as our company has grown and been more successful, it's been there. But again, some days you wonder if that would be uh, how that would be, you know, because we don't we don't run it that way. So, yeah. it's, uh, you know, everybody has different personalities and different uh, wants and different needs. And so uh, the way it works out with us usually works out pretty good. You know, you mentioned um, you don't know how that would be because that's not the direction we went. And we like to be together. Like, that's another piece. We like to vacation together. We like to hang out together. Like, having a good day is really, like, we're driving into work together. We're laughing about something. We're planning, making some decisions here and there about what's going on in the schedule. Like... That's another piece too, is if you were doing something that you like to do, would you want to do it with that human all the time? It's helpful. That is very helpful. And, uh, and so that's one aspect of our relationship where that brings us together because we actually like to be together. And when we're not together for um, a, 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 an amount of time, then that tends to like, uh, not be not do as well for either one of us because we really just that's part of our enjoyment of life is being together so that's something else to think about if you're already saying to yourself man when is this person gonna like go somewhere then maybe that's not somebody that you want to jump into uh, a business where you could be working around the clock together especially in crisis situations or bursts of busyness yeah it's 24 7 for us i mean it's all the time so, I mean, and, and it is great. It is great. And then when there's those low periods, it's kind of a, a little bit there and it's kind of getting out of the funk. And then usually one of us will get the other person out of the funk and then it's back to good again. So, uh, again, I, it's it's not horrible by any means. It's great. Our company runs very well together and we work well together. It's just you guys have to know that there's going to be some low spots and how do you get out of the low spots? And that's the, that's the trick. It's anything else. Just like when your company's in a low spot, how do you get your low spot out? How do you help your employees get into a... Uh, a raise up level and make them feel better. So it's it's always a constant. We are the number one. Somebody said it the other day. We're the number one domino. We're the one that stops the 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 fall from happening. We are the one that is going to trigger everything else to be a better day and, and get everything complete. And if we're not that way, then when we come to work, then our employees are not that way. So we have to have that mindset that we're going to be solid. We're going to be positive. We're going to come in here and we're going to have a uh, a good day and all of our employees are going to have a good day. And, uh, and I think that's the mindset that we come with almost every single day. Uh, there's some days that we fall short and, uh, some days that we have to make it up. So, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a lot, it's a lot, it's a lot of, uh, especially when you have over 235 employees that you're maintaining, um, they do drain a lot of your time. And then everybody, you have those key employees that need a little bit of time here and there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's 15 minutes there, 30 minutes there, an hour. And we have some employees that you have a half an hour meeting with, and it turns out to an hour and a half because you're dealing in all their problems and all their situations coming on. And then sometimes I feel like Athena and I run short on each other for each other in time, because then by the end of the day, it's a 15 hour day or whatever else it is. Is, then we're trying to have our time and then our kids are there and then the yes. kids take up the other part of it. So sometimes when we go on our trips, that's the best trips we get because sometimes our work trips are turned into our, our alone our trips. trips. Yes. Yeah, our alone trips. And it's not somebody saying, hey, what are we going to do? What's for dinner? What's for lunch? What's next? What are we going to play? And that's our kids because, you know, they're trying to plan out their time and what yeah. they're doing. Then we don't have the employees saying, hey, when are we going to get this? When are we going to do this? And when is this going to change? Are we getting new vehicles? What's going on? You know, so there's always that. I got an idea. <laughs> yeah, so there's always that, um, that mix of things coming at you. So you have to guard your time sometimes. Sometimes you have to tell somebody. I, I just had an employee that was up there and he was wanting to yap around. I said, hey, I, I'm going to be late to a podcast because I love timeliness. I am the... I hate being late to anything and I don't think anybody should be late to anything. So it, that is a uh, pet peeve that I have. Like my vehicles have to be clean. They have to be nice. The uniforms have to be nice on the employees. This is some of the pet peeves that I have that I have to. So 
sometimes I have to tell my employees or tell the other people, hey, I have to go, I have to get off the phone or I have to go because we have an appointment to make and we have to do it. And so it, uh, it's important for me. So sometimes I have to cut them short and I tell them it's nothing personal. I just, I have to go. But if they had their way, they would take two hours of my day. And uh, I don't know if we would accomplish a whole lot besides them getting some stuff off their chest. And some days I have to stop and let them do that and let them do it because they have to decompress what's going on in their head. But it can't be every day. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, one of the processes that we have for our team to be able to communicate stuff that they need to say is... Uh, HR has a calendar that anybody can schedule a meeting. And so then it's just their focused time. And it's not something like, because that happens with us too, is it's one of us wants to like get a decision made or answer a question about something. And, uh, and then we've got this schedule going on or, or there's a client meeting or um, responsibilities that we have. And it's, it, it can't always be that crash your schedule and get this answer and then have the expectation that, oh, well, you don't care about me. Like you don't want your team member walking away and going, oh, you don't, you must not care about me because you're not making time for me right in this moment when I need you to make time for me or when I want you to. And so sometimes what the answer that I'll give to that is I want to be able to give you my full attention and talk to you about this with, um, with focus. I have these other things going on today and I really would like to circle back with you. Can you meet me at three o'clock and, and I'll be back at the office or something like that. And that usually helps. It, it, uh, it of course doesn't satisfy them right then and there, but it does help to just be able to communicate that. And that's why I think our schedule together has been so great because it's really easy to see when we're in meetings now and with what's going on and and then it's not just oh somebody's not answering my phone call because i know the stigma with um the, the running joke with husbands and their wives cell phones is like is what they, oh, they don't answer, answer it <laughs> i think every um husband that i've ever heard went mention cell phone Dude, and wives let it be some female that you haven't talked to in six months and all of a sudden that phone gets answered but if your husband calls, you're like, oh, I can just talk to him later. And you hit the do not disturb or I'm busy or I'm that. And then I come around the corner and I hear what she's busy with. And I'm thinking, what the hell is she doing? Why is she not answering my call? She's busy with nonsense right now. But <laughs> This is one of the pieces where um, he mentioned earlier that sometimes we don't agree on what's important. And, and really, it's like also identifying the difference between urgent and important and um, one of the things that I really appreciate about Charlie is that things can be urgent for him because he's wanting to get that thing done and get it off his plate so that he can move on to the next. And then he doesn't have to try to remember to follow up. And I can totally get that. There are some things that, that absolutely make sense. I need to check off my list. I, yeah. I hate leaving it out there. Like owing money. I hate owing money to anybody. I, when I have to chase down my clients or I have to chase down, not my clients, my vendors to pay them, I, I, I it makes me cringe. I have a medical vendor that we have and we buy, you know, $50,000 pieces from them and I got to chase them down to give them the money because I want to make sure that that's off my books and nothing happens. They're like, oh, don't worry about it. We'll get it to you. And then it's like three months later, they're like, hey, we haven't got paid for this. I'm like, Look at your emails. I've sent you six emails to try to pay this thing. You haven't sent me an invoice yet. So stuff like that tends to, because as, as we were younger, we didn't have that cash flow yeah. coming in. We didn't have that. So we were always worried about making sure everything was on time and trying to get it there. And now right when a bill comes out, I want to pay it immediately. I don't want to wait any time. I want to make sure that it's paid because mm -hmm. we have money in the account. We have things. I don't want people wanting to know if they're money is coming. I, I want them to know it's instantaneously. If they get it done, we're going to send them a check. We're going to give them a visa immediately and it's taken care of because I would love that as a vendor too. I would love to not have a million or two million in, in, uh, AR. in, in AR sitting out there because somebody else is waiting six months and thinks that we have enough money to, to go ahead and, and hold that. So it's, yeah. it's, it's tough, but I am completely happy that I'm married to my wife, Athena. And, uh, I, this is a tougher subject for me. So if I don't look as, um, 
uh, it's a little more happy. transparent. Yeah, it's it's transparent, and, and you know the one thing that we don't want to tell you and all this stuff is just say, hey, we're all everything's peaches and roses here. I mean, it, yeah. some days it's not, but <clears throat> the truth is that we work through it together. And even though some days I'm low and sometimes thing is high, and by vice versa, and when I say that in attitude levels, that was we try to bring each other up and trying to love each other and then respect each other and then do the job that we need to do. And you know, it's been very nice that God has given us so much responsibility and so much uh, uh, wisdom. I guess I want to know wisdom, just so many experiences in our life that we can share with others yeah. and uh, and gave us the responsibility of, of taking care of others and their livelihoods and their decision what's going on in their life and be able to help our family members uh, in, in crises or jobs or whatever else it is, we're very special to be able to do that because there's a lot of people who just don't have those resources to be able to do that. And so I feel like we have to be good stewards of it. But on top of that, we can't let it get to a point where it affects us because when it starts to affect us, then it affects everything. Then it affects our kids and everything else like that too. So we have to be mindful about it. And I think you as viewers, you have to be mindful of what's going to steal your time. Um, what's gonna what's gonna um, take time away from what's more important and uh, as we are getting into our years now um, with BAC and AMT we know our time is important too and our time is very important and you know the uh, job not every job has to be done and five years ago you would ask me that question and you're like crazy if we have iron on the ground and there's employees to be doing it then we need to be doing that trip because that is revenue that we need to take in but all the time you think of that time is there's no, there's no real value on time. There's no real dollar amount you can put on time. No, it. it's like priceless. It is. It's priceless. So your time is important too. And we appreciate those employees that put overtime in and want those overtimes and those things. But as we try to do it, we try to respect their hours too and not bug them as much or call them in or have some things. Sometimes we just have to turn down trips. So I'm glad that I get that time away from my wife, that we join these groups and we do some of these things and we get out of here because I'm thinking to myself, I don't want to leave during the summertime and we have another trip coming up in July mm -hmm. that I'm not super excited to go to 114 degree weather, but I know that we're going to get some alone time and where kids won't be there and we'll be around other adults or like-minded people that are going to encourage us and, and yeah, we're we going to encourage them. them. So and, it helps. Yeah. It definitely helps. And I think that that's probably another key is getting connected in a group that is going to encourage you in your business and your marriage. Sometimes you can find like we have, we're a part of a business group that has couples and singles and we tend to gravitate towards some of the couples, but we also have a few that we connected with that are singles and they just kind of, you know, pal around with us too when we're, when we're going to these meetings. But that's probably a bigger piece here is it's like guarding your time can look like making sure that you're not allowing that energy to get sucked out of you to where when you go home, like last night, for instance, you haven't been feeling as well because you pulled out a rib on the boat last week. And, um, and I come home and it's like eight o'clock at night and the sun is still up here. Okay. 10 o'clock at night. 10 o'clock because that's right. <laughs> I volunteer for this. Almost team. 10. It was 10 45 and she wanted to start changing out rugs. So let's look at the furniture and change rugs. I'm like, we were up at seven in the morning. I'm like, really today, right now, 15 hours into this. And I, I'm like, I'm out, I'm tapping out. And she was like, yeah, we're going to get this and get this. And our son's looking at her like she's crazy too. And I'm just like, but, you know, we get these bursts of energies and she's got this mind and I just, I let her have it. I just, oh, well, fine, I'll just go to bed. <laughs> you know, it's not even about bursts of energy. It's that I'm just not, um, I, I left, I left the, the volunteer job and uh, drove home, which is about an hour and 15 minutes. And my thought was, is I have this older rug in my living room and I wanted to, I had a newer rug that I, I don't currently have a place for. And so I wasn't feeling tired or like drained or whatever. And I'm also not injured, so that helps too. Uh, but yeah, and so it's like we have those moments where one of us is feeling one way and another one of us is feeling another way. And that is a, an example of how you're just like, I'm thinking to myself, this rug change out is literally going to take me like 15 minutes tops if I can get the couch put back together. And, and one of the kids helps me because I knew you were out because you were injured. So, um, 
if you guys see this weird post, I mean, I'm, I'm putting this down here because I uh, was on the boat the other day and I was leaning over and a rib popped in, a rib popped back out and laid me flat on my back for a minute. So it's been a little bit tougher. So sorry about I'm a little bit uncomfortable position. I'm just trying to get in a position of comfort. So, yeah. and, and the thing is right. Just the other day she came home and she was wiped out after we came back from our trip and I was up and I, I didn't go to sleep as fast as she did. And so sometimes you don't have those same sleep schedules. We try to go to bed around the same time with each other because we have to have our time. And, uh, and so, uh, some days one of us goes to bed before the other one. And then, yeah. then she'll like, you didn't tell me you're going to bed. I'm like, I did, but you just didn't hear cause you were in your world or you were listening to a podcast or you were doing something with the kids or something like that. And so we try to, uh, we try to stay on each other's schedule. Well, and you know, that's a good point. Staying on the same schedule. That is another thing that helps us. And then also I, I would say communicating, like if one person's leaving or one person's doing this, um, or they're like going outside and shifting gears. It's, we, we seem to have this like roll call at our house, especially with our teenagers, where if they only see one of us, then the first question they ask is, where's the, where's other, the one? other one? <laughs> and it never fails. It, and it'll happen several times a day. Where's mom? Where's that? Where's that? Uh, and so I want to make sure they're not missing out on something. You mm -hmm. think that's it? No, they're just doing roll call, figure out where everybody's at so they know where they want to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's more it, is they want to know what the other person's doing because they might want us to buy them something. They might want us to, um, they might want to go with us or they might want to go with the other they one. They track us. They track us. They always ask us where we're at. And I said, you know, I'm at Starbucks. What do you want? And she's like, will you give me this? So. You know, that's true. And I think part of... Um, Part of why that is true is because Charlie and I, we have our schedules within our calendar, but we have the flexibility to change our schedules and switch around things. And the kids know that sometimes we'll just change our mind about something and we'll be like way over here now. And that's one of the freedoms that we enjoy in this entrepreneurial journey together is we can just decide, hey, we're going to do this thing. And then we don't tell the kids because we don't usually tell them what we're doing unless we have like a little quick recap on this is what's happening for the weekend. Because I think they ask us like a hundred times a week. So yeah, we... but somewhere like we're going on a trip or something like that, they'll bug us to death about it. So same thing you got to do with the grandkids and everybody else, you know, same thing you got to do with employees. Everybody wants to know. They're on the now program. They want to do it now. They want to know now. They want all the information. More keeping them guessing. Yeah which can be fun sometimes, especially when we're the only ones who know what's, what's going on sometimes. So it's, well, if we do, we know most of it. We don't know all of it, excuse me. We kind of have like a rough draft in the back of our minds, but then as, it's like being open for opportunities. So if there's a new opportunity that presents that sounds really cool, we can flex and go, you know, head in that direction. Whereas that can be really hard for some people. And that's something to consider is, that if your partner is just really fearful and rigid about like I don't want all that spontaneity or that variety then that's something you've got to get on the same page with absolutely a lot of people have problems with that well I mean a lot of people have to plan out their whole entire trip from the day on I mean we we usually try to plan out at least the next first, 24 to 48 hours sleeping <laughs> the first night <laughs> and then we figure it out from there. <laughs> well, weather's a factor. Everything's a factor. And, you know, yeah. I mean, it's always been in our business that we've, uh, we always kind of let it come first. So we always kind of see what's going on, but now it's kind of like, now we come first. So it's like, what are we going to do when we get there? How's the weather going to be? What's going to go on? Mm -hmm. What kind of car are we going to rent? What are we going to do? You know, we just always get the first 24 to 48 hours taken care of because we know we're going to be tired after Traveling. Of course, leaving from Alaska to go anywhere warm is uh, is is a, is a is about uh, uh, a long trip, and then we get there, and then we just kind of roll out from there. And that's one thing I really do appreciate with Athena is that we can just roll out, or we can just say, "Hey, we're tired. Let's go book a trip to Hawaii in three days and go take off." And then we call our favorite person, Sherry, and she makes the place happen for yeah. us. And we go down there, and we just get away for five days or six days, and just get that reset and. Uh, in, in a traditional job, it would be a little bit tougher to do that unless you have an amazing uh, people you work for that can uh, can Afford absorb to lose you for yeah, that long. Yeah, absorb or lose yeah. you that long. And, you know, sometimes you just have to have those resets. So so in, in the long run of this thing, I couldn't think of a better partner 99.9% uh, .9 of the days. And there's that 1% that you're just thinking to myself, holy tamale, what the hell did I get myself into? But in the in the long run, it, it, it's, it works out really well for us. Um, it... Uh, 
we don't get spun up on things that we used to. Um, used to be if anything was spent in a certain amount of money or something happened that we'd have to make sure. And then we still do on, a, on up to a dollar's amount. But for the most part, we're on the same page of what we're doing, where we're buying things, what we're doing, how yeah. we're buying them, what we're going on, how we're going to get employees in, how we're going to, um, how much more management staff we need to bring on, all those things. You know, we're pretty much in there. And then we talk about the raises where we talk about bonuses. We talk about those things. And we always look at our employees as, we want to treat them the way we want to be treated also. So, you know, I think something also that really launched us into that next phase of trust was getting out of debt. Yes. Because there was times where we wouldn't be on the same page about buying things because we had this debt load to service. And when that happened, and we like made the decision that this was not going to, like we're paying off debt and we're getting out of debt and debt's not gonna be a thing. Um, that I really felt like, almost like I relaxed a little bit more around that. Sure, well, you were a different person after I did it. You know, um, being in debt to anybody, uh, we had a little bit of IRS debt and bring it out because it's something that I think you as business owners need to realize is that it's really easy to skip a 941 payment and have that extra 50 or 60,000 in your account to do something with or something like that. And you skip enough of those and tell you the IRS comes knocking on your door and telling you that you need to pay that. And um, I'm not ashamed of that fact that we had that problem because I think it made us into a better company and who we are now. Um, we would have never seen that 10, 12, 15 years ago because it was really uh, financially disability it was like a it's like we had a handicap always on top of us but yeah, you know we got it was into, bondage it was sure. bondage for sure but getting ourselves out of that and never getting ourselves back into it and didn't having the credit rating we do and the homes that we own now and the investments that we put into and and that was just a huge part of it and i and I, I think another big part of what are one of the things that really made us a little bit more successful in this last five four or five years was the pan, the pandemic the pandemic was really big and we were really nobody really knew what to do. And, and I think that just us sitting back and re-collaborating because we were like, okay, we're gonna have to cut costs. We're gonna have to do this. And we, we basically just said, hey, let's wait 24, 48 hours and let's see where we are with this before we make any hasty decisions. And then we just looked at it and said, you know, how can we capitalize on this? How can we be more how of a partner? How can we help people? How can we do things? And what does this really look at? And what's the investments we need to do to get safety gear? And we really went into high gear and just saying, telling our clients, hey, we're here. We still got to get people from point A to point B. How are we going to do this? And being a lot of other people weren't um, uh, as... Uh, I guess gung ho to jump into that arena. Um, we were very much so to be able to capitalize on that, and then we helped other people in our industry um, throughout the Lord of Fate, Lord of Forty Eight, to jump into these things too, because there were so many opportunities to really to uh, work with people and, and be a partner with them, and uh, it really pulled us through. And knowing the employees that were able to. Um, keep their homes, keep their cars. They weren't getting laid off. They weren't having all these other issues. It was really huge and knowing that we were working alongside of them. So when I say all that, um, I think we've talked about this in our previous podcast that this is just another thing that made us stronger, better, and realize how we can work with ourselves more. And instead of taking this situation and um, where a lot of other companies are like, we're just gonna shut the doors, not do nothing, and we're gonna wait for this to go back, we really looked at it and say, how can we make this safe and how can we make this better and how can we not have that problem? And uh, it really made us even work that much closer together and making the decisions that we did. Yeah, that, uh, I think not having a debt load like some of the other organizations oh, yeah. had probably gave us a little more confidence to make some of those decisions because we weren't in this spirit of fear around, oh my gosh, how am I gonna, gonna make repo this our payment? Mm -hmm. And is somebody gonna come and take this? And we didn't we didn't have that. We were able to make decisions based on um, what was best for the organization and the team and servicing the customers. Well, owning all of our own vehicles at that time uh, and still in the same place where now we own all of our vehicles, uh, we didn't have that debt load. And if we had to take a vehicle off or three or five or take them off insurance, we could because we owned them outright and we yeah. didn't have a bank under the back of us. And we didn't have our house tied up to it. We didn't have our mortgage or other people's parents' mortgage. Uh, because you know you build so quick, so fast sometimes and the money's rolling in, but then something happens and a hiccup and all of a sudden you're in panic mode. And we weren't in there. We had cash flow, we had money, we had money set aside. So we were in a different position, but 
we knew it would only last for so long and nobody knew how long the pandemic was going to last. Yeah, so wasn't that, wasn't sure. a, uh, that wasn't a long-term program is we had to figure out how we could be useful and how we can make it work. And AMT really came in long with that during the ambulance side. So we really had a lot with that. And then BAC really jumped in too. So it was really a good combination to have both of them at that time. We were really strong in that, in that period. So another thing that helped us get to where we're at now is the partnership that we had that and see an eye to eye. So um, not all pandemics turned out to be horrible for everybody. And it was a horrible pandemic and it was a horrible thing for so many people that they lost and loved ones. But the other part of that was that how many people really were able to stay afloat and be able to get to that. So I, and then it taught us lessons about how to manage our money. I mean... And it's funny as I say that with our industry, but everybody's like, I'm never gonna get back into that now. And now I see all these guys buying these $600,000 motor coaches and doing all this stuff and they're getting their stuff back into that thing because the money's good and everybody's doing well. But and again, we try to have a, a different lifestyle in that. We like to try to own what we have and don't buy outside of our means. We do and, own what we have. Yes. Yeah. We, and we try not to get ourselves in any kind of debts that we can't pull ourselves. Real estate's pretty much our only debt and we don't have a lot of debt in that, so. You know, I would say that uh, making these these strategic moves to where there isn't something blocking you in between your relationship, like debt, because one person can be like, oh, we shouldn't be treating ourselves. It's like it creates this perspective that you're kind of playing it small because you want to be conscientious of this debt and getting done with the debt. And so there was a lot of times where I felt like I was holding us back from really a lifestyle or enjoying ourselves a little bit more because we had this over here that we needed to take care of. And I really felt like when we, we removed that obstacle that that opened me more to having more fun. I didn't feel like I was as much fun before that because I had this space in my head and it was it wasn't as easy was, for you and then i would be like upset with you sometimes especially when we were younger because i'm like i'm clipping coupons over here and you're like just doing your own thing you know right. now it's the opposite i'm clipping coupons and she's doing her own thing over here <laughs> you know i don't think it's the opposite it's just that um there is there's just things that when you decide that you want to have in your life and if you can afford to have them, then why don't you have them? Like and if I it's agree with that. bringing you happiness, if it's bringing you joy, like Charlie, I remember the first time he bought a massage chair for, for the house. He felt really, I knew, I could feel the energy that he was like wanting to justify this purchase. But I was like, hey, if you, you use it every day, like, I don't care. I just, if we're going to buy it, like actually use it. Don't let it be like this gimmick that is just cool for the well, minute. Let, let's go back to that. I, I bought that as a Christmas gift for the family. Yeah, he, the that's how one. it starts. Just, that was the first one. For, for you guys, it's like, oh, this is for the family. And all the family used it and all of our friends used it too. So it was very well used and it was very easy to be able to get the second and the third and the fourth massage chair from those because we ended up getting more and then we sold some, one of the other ones and we kept some yeah. of the other ones. So, and, and to this day, everybody uses them too. So it, it is, um, it's something that is absolutely used, but it's, it's like, I, I think that as time went by and we kind of like moved into this new phase of not having the debt load over us that, those little luxuries uh, were just not even something that created headspace for either one of us anymore. And that's been nice. And I remember uh, the first, like when the dust kind of settled and we wrote that last big check for, um, for our debt load, uh, some time went by and I was like, hey, I think I'm gonna buy a new car. <laughs> and he's like, okay. Um, but I had never, like we had bought fleet cars and there was a season where we did drive some of the fleet cars earlier on. We didn't hear about business. those new back in the day either. We yeah. always were secondary, we were the secondary market yeah. people. But no. that was like my first brand new car that I bought for myself to drive and- It was a Hellcat. Yeah, it was a Hellcat. And that was a really nice car. And that car brought me a lot of joy. And I know that, um, you know, money can't buy happiness, but it sure can take care of a lot of things that can 
Makes, I don't agree with my, brings, yeah, my happiness. It brings you joy. <laughs> it brings you joy, which is happiness. It is a, I guess it is a sliver of it happiness is. there. So, so the, the point of all this is, is that I think it takes a solid commitment that you're on this journey. And there's been times where I've felt this, it, it's like whatever happened when we were younger, we had this like ability to say we're not giving up even when it looked like it wasn't good. And we had grace for each other in each one of those moments. And then the rest of it, we kind of like tripped through. And like you, you get older and then you start to see patterns, patterns that no longer serve you in your relationships. And you start like deducting those patterns and overcoming those patterns. And I think that that is really where the joy starts to shine through is when you're like, hey, you know, I have this pattern of like withdrawing or I have this pattern of um, having this I don't care attitude or whatever. And it's really, it, it doesn't bring you closer together. It just... It doesn't serve you. No. It doesn't serve you in the long run. And I think getting getting around others who are equally like identifying their own patterns and wanting to be their best self like-minded yeah that that encourages you to keep moving on and and sometimes gives you extra like ideas and strategies a good core group is always uh, important and good mentors and people that you can look up to and talk to and have real talks and they can have real talks with you and that's that's you know that's important because somebody needs to call you on your shit once in a while yeah. And, uh, and if nobody does, then you think it's real. And sometimes if it's not, then they need to call you on it and say, hey, you know, you need to really look at this. And is this you or them? You know, and then those are the true talks. Those are the people that are really your friends. The people that just tell you, oh, you're doing such a great job and you're doing this, this, and this, and you're so awesome are good service friends. And they might really feel that way, but you need somebody that's going to call you on your stuff and say, hey, this is not good, Charlie, or this is, you know, hey, you're doing a great job, but you need to look at this, or you need to look at these other feelings, and hey, you're screwing up, you know, and those are the people you need by your side, because those are the ones who are going to tell you honestly. The people that just tell you how great you are, and how everything else is just so picture perfect in your world, none of our worlds are perfect, you know, they're, they're, they're as best as we make them, and you can make your world much better, you can make it much worse, but you have to have uh, key people as your wife, or your kids, or whatever else it is, too, that can call you on your stuff, too. And it's important, you know, that's, that's the important part. And then mean it into a way that is not hurtful or not mean, but it's, they're trying to bring it at a point saying, Hey, if you didn't notice, this is what's going on. Cause sometimes we don't. Yeah. And I would also say that having your, like being in business, there's team members that are working um, under our umbrella, but they're not necessarily in a position to where they're going to tell you what they really think is going on. They're going to be more like, yeah, I agree with you. That's a great idea. And so it takes a, some vulnerability to develop these other relationships that are going to be strong to tell you, hey, this, this, you need to look at this. And, and it's equally important to develop relationships outside of the marriage that are going to tell you like it is people that you trust so that your spouse isn't always the person that's like going, hey, because that's not fair to your spouse. If you're not developing a, a relationship with other peers, preferably of the same sex, um, it's, it's usually better if guys are talking with guys and collaborating with guys instead of becoming friends with like guys and girls. And that just, that usually will spin some division. Um, but not allowing your spouse to be your only sounding board and the one who's always having to come to you and going, Hey, like this isn't okay because of these reasons that makes a big difference because, you know, as for, from my perspective, I don't want to have to come to you and like this be like some kind of like picking session. I want it to be about like enjoying our time together. And if you're having solid feedback with another person that you trust and that loves you that um i don't need to be that person i can just enjoy you for who who you are and, and what you're doing and only like hit the really high notes if those even come up but i think that 
looking back on the 27 years that there are things that I wish we would have learned faster, but it's going to be everybody's, everybody's own pace. And I don't think it would have done us any more faster or slower or whatever else. I think time is time and we're here where we are at and we're in a good spot and that's all that's important. So yep. I, 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 I don't try to go backwards and try to figure out how we can redo it. I'm yeah. just here. Yeah. I'm glad we're here. Yeah, it's good. All right. So thank you guys for joining us for this episode of uh, life and marriage and business. And we hope this was helpful. And uh, we absolutely would love for you to hit us up on our website at raiseupmindset.com and submit some questions that we can answer on one of these episodes and uh, subscribe to our YouTube page. Yeah, and if you know anybody else that's looking for some help in these areas, have them go to the page too. And if they need some uh, advice or something they can do to help with, we can help with that. And if you're a married couple that's struggling to do in your businesses, you're welcome to reach out to either one of us. Yes, we, we would love to be a resource and just encourage you. So thanks right. for joining us. See ya. Bye. Bye.